It's no secret that Manchester United have had their ups and downs over the last decade. Ever since Alex Ferguson left Manchester United, they have struggled to find a manager that can keep them at the very top, at least for more than one season. Six managers, 11 seasons, and zero big trophies won. No, we are not counting the Europa League. Not a single manager post Fergie has found true success at Manchester United. But who's actually been the best and who's been the worst? To understand the level of which these six managers had to reach the level at, we need to look back at Sir Alex Ferguson's backstory at Manchester United. Sir Alex took charge of Manchester United in 1986. His first few years at Manchester United were extremely challenging as he had to rebuild a new team as well as facing criticism and scrutiny from the media. After all of the speculation that you see most Manchester United managers go through, yep, so Alex Ferguson did go through that. His first major success came in 1990 against Crystal Palace as Manchester United won 2-1 to win the FA Cup. In 1992, we saw the integration and the creation of the Premier League, which actually in turn led to the creation of the most dominant English football side in Premier League history. That very season, Manchester United won their very first top flight title in 26 years of the club. Man United then went on to dominate football for years to come. And then the following season after that achievement, they went on to achieve the greatest achievement in Premier League history as Manchester United went on to win the famous 1999 treble and yes it is the greatest achievement in Premier League history if you want me to debate that make sure to leave it in the comments and I'll make a video about that we fast forward a couple of years and Manchester United are consistently winning trophy after trophy which eventually led to the legends retirement in the 2012-2013 season which he famously capped off with a Premier League title as well as this iconic farewell speech my retirement doesn't mean the end. I'll be able to now enjoy watching them rather than suffer with them. <laughs> Your but job now is to stand by our new manager. Wait, wait, wait. So let's just take a step back. So Alex won 13 Prem titles, four FA Cups, five League Cups, two Champions Leagues, and all of these other trophies as well. That means he approximately averaged one trophy every season for 26 seasons. Insane, I know. So that's the standard. Now let's look at the managers after his reign. David Moyes, the man who was meant to be his successor, the heir to his throne, could not have gone worse. Loss after loss after loss, and a couple of draws. He just couldn't find the form that we saw he had with Everton before. And before the season had even ended, he was gone. Now don't worry, we're gonna be going into deeper explanation about these managers, but David Moyes' reign was so short, that's literally all the description I have. So David Moyes, he gets a two out of 10 as Manchester United manager. Louis van Gaal, a man that came into the Manchester United dressing room and knew exactly what he needed to change. He actually made a lot of new signings, which ended up in the long term doing very well for Manchester United, but also some of them flopping incredibly hard. His style of play was quite obvious at first, high possession team in what seemed to be a 3-5-2 formation, but that later down the line, ended up changing quite frequently. His first season United ended up finishing fourth securing Champions League football, but getting knocked out in all of the cups. The following season, his team had a massive drop off and Manchester United ended up falling out of the top four. But the club did win their first bit of silverware since Alex Ferguson retired. After securing an FA Cup trophy against Crystal Palace in the final. Sound familiar, doesn't it? His first major success against Crystal Palace as Manchester United won 2-1 to win the FA Cup. He lost all faith with the fans, being criticised for his slow style of play, which we didn't originally sign him for, and lacking that attacking flair that Manchester United were always known for under Sir Alex. And with that, just two days later, he was sacked. As much as it didn't work out, he still won some silverware this time at Manchester United, so I'm going to give him his overall score of a 5 out of 10. Then comes the special one, Jose Mario dos Santos Mourinho. Or, or Jose, I guess. The Portuguese came into the Manchester United dressing room with a legacy, an expectation on his shoulders. After his success with Chelsea, Porto and Real Madrid, Mourinho had silverware attached to his name and Manchester United fans thought that he could replicate that at the Red Devil. After signing for Manchester United in 2016, his first season was off to an absolute flyer. Despite finishing sixth in the Premier League, they ended up winning a Carabao Cup and the Europa League, which saw them finish in the UCL spots. And the following season was actually the reverse. His team performed at an incredibly high level, and despite not being able to win any trophies in his second season, he did come second in the Prem, going toe to toe with Man City, close to the end, but not really. He also reached the FA Cup final, but sadly they were beaten against Chelsea. However, after his second season, fans were not pleased with his performance and his playstyle. But in fairness, he did bring short-term success 
so Manchester United fans were willing to stick around with him. Then, in the 18-19 season, things took a turn for the worst. United looked horrid, sluggish in pretty much every single game they played. On top of that, there were fallouts with Mourinho and some of the players, which ended up leading to destruction in the dressing room. Fans could sense that Mourinho was on his last strings after every single game they played. But a loss to Liverpool in December 2018 saw him get the sack a few days later after the result. The parting ways between Jose and United were very much needed, but in turn, he did still succeed quite well at Manchester United, so I'd give him probably around a 7 out of 10. Then, out of the blue, the club legend himself, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, walks into the club. Solskjaer was appointed a few days after Mourinho left as an interim manager to fill in until the end of the season. He was meant to steady the ship until the United found a good manager to replace him in the summer. However, things turned out differently than expected. He hit the ground running superbly against Cardiff with a 5-1 win and started playing emphatic football and the players actually seemed to be happy again. Bear in mind, we hadn't seen Manchester United players play the way they did with the amount of heart they did in so, so long. He then followed that win up with a great run of games. United just looked unplayable. Even after a loss to PSG in the round of 16, United pulled off one of the most iconic comebacks in UCL history in the last decade. I mean, if you remember when Rashford smashed that top bins in the 94th minute against Buffon, the entire football world went absolutely nuts. Unfortunately, the season did end with a little bit of a drop from Manchester United, which saw them finish sixth place and out of the UCL spot and get knocked out by Barcelona in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. But after impressing the fans and certainly the board, everybody was calling him for him to get the permanent role at Manchester United. Which, to Oli's excitement, did come in 2019. Oli's first season was rocky and didn't look great at first, but his signing of Bruno Fernandes absolutely transformed the second half of the season for Manchester United. They went on an amazing run of form and saw them secure third place in the Premier League. You know what that means? Champions League. He then followed that up with a brilliant second season, getting second place in the Premier League and being in the title race for a little bit and reaching the Europa League final. But sadly, losing out in the end. Despite the sad ending, we definitely saw such big improvements from players like Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, Mason Greenwood, Pogba, Shaw and De Gea, all of these players performed at such a high level that season. The following season felt like make or break for Solskjaer. He got three of the biggest signings in the entire transfer window and everybody thought that United were going to be challenging City and Liverpool for the title and potentially even win the Prem. But things took a turn for the worst. Despite an emphatic win against Leeds on the opening day, Solskjaer's team just fell apart. Bad result after bad result, which led to the jaw-dropping game of Leicester and then Liverpool, where United got battered 5 no. Yeah, we all remember that. After that game, Solskjaer's team never looked the same and he lost all trust in the fans. Continuous poor results game after game and the final sword was given to him at a 4-1 loss to Watford, which saw him sacked and United were in a little bit of trouble. Now, even though he didn't win a trophy, he got Manchester United fans in love with Manchester United and the football again. So I'd say a 7 out of 10, even though he didn't win trophies, he's probably provided some of the happiest years as a Manchester United fan. But then came the appointment of Ralph Ranić. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, let's just take a breather. We've been going so fast this video. Let's just take a deep breath. <sighs> well, yeah, you might as well just like and subscribe. It's completely free. It's also really helpful. Anyways, back to the video. The appointment of Ralph Ranić is probably one of the worst appointments in Manchester United history. To summarize, he had a total of 11 wins in 28 games. A miserable end to the season that already started off poorly. For me, it's got to be a 2 out of 10. Then came the appointment of current Manchester United manager, Eric Ten Hag. United fans actually expected very little from Ten Hag in his first season, as he was technically inheriting, statistically, the worst Manchester United side in Premier League history. He secured some big signings like Casemiro, Lissandra Martinez, Tyrone Malasia and Anthony, which we will not talk about in this video. Otherwise, it might just be a two hour rant video. Anyways, anyways, those signings, especially Casemiro and Licha, were big catalysts for his first season's unexpected success. Oh, and Rashford might have had a, a, a small influence on it as well. In his first season, despite everybody expecting a seventh or sixth place finish, he ended up with an impressive points tally of 75 points, getting third place and Champions League football. Not only did he achieve success in the Prem, but he also reached two cup finals, winning one of them against Newcastle with the Carabao Cup and then losing the FA Cup to Man City. Getting them the treble. Despite the ups and downs of beating Barcelona and winning their Carabao Cup in the span of one week, to losing 7-0 to Liverpool in the next week, it was a season where Ten Hag massively overachieved and completely silenced the critics. However, his second and current season is something 
no fan frankly expected. Not even rival fan. United have been a shadow of their former selves this season. And nobody knows why. Now, I could go into detail about why Manchester United are so bad this season, because trust me, there's a lot. But I have actually made a video detailing how Manchester United are so bad this season. So if you want to check it out, make sure to click the link up there, or make sure to click the link in the description after this video. So the season is still ongoing and it's definitely not done, but judging him on his tenure at Manchester United so far, I'd give him a seven out of 10. So now the grand question, Who's been the best Manchester United manager and who's been the worst post Fergie? Well, you may be asking yourself, but Josh, you gave them ratings, so surely we already know who the manager is. That's where you're wrong. You see, I gave you those ratings to give you some false hope to make you think that you actually thought you knew the answer to the question. Those ratings were complete waffle. Now you're really wondering, huh? So first, let's look at it on face value. I'm gonna give you guys 10 seconds to write down in the comments who you think who's been the best and the worst Manchester United manager. So take 10 seconds now. So the best Manchester United manager after Sir Alex Ferguson retirement, considering that they got us playing a beautiful brand of football, they got the players enjoying football again, and they won some trophies, the best manager post Sir Alex is Eric Ten Hag. Now, let me give you my reason. When evaluating who was the best Manchester United manager, I had to look at it with two different lenses. The first one I like to call the eye test, and the second one the BOR test or based on results. Off the eye test alone, there was only two managers that came to mind and that was Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Eric Ten Hag. In my opinion, these were the only two managers that actually got us playing an exciting brand of football and made Manchester United fans fall in love with the game again. And people might laugh at the Eric Ten Hag shout based on recency bias and the way we're playing currently, but statistically, Eric Ten Hag actually has the best win rates out of any other Manchester United manager since Sir Alex Ferguson. And if you want proof of these decisions, make sure to go click the link in the description where I have highlights of Oli's best game as Manchester United manager and Eric Ten Hag's current best game as Manchester United manager. And off the BOR or based on results, it is between Jose Mourinho and Eric Ten Hag. My reasoning for this is purely because they have the best win rate out of Manchester United managers, as well as the fact that they both wanted some trophies. So I can't really be mad at it. So you can clearly see that Eric Ten Hag was the best pick out of the bunch at least when you look at it from a more logical two lenses point of view, I guess. But remember, this is all my opinion, so make sure to go let me know your opinion in the comments. Click here to watch a Manchester United video on why I think they're so bad this season, and click here to watch some random video that YouTube generates for you. I don't know what it's gonna be. But anyways, if you guys do enjoy this sort of content, make sure to subscribe and like the video and let me know in the comments that you enjoy it, and I'll be sure to make more of them. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.